What's happening YouTube? It's Mark from Resistance Quest, your old buddy. And I just want to talk about something on my mind having to do with the personal training industry, the fitness industry, the online fitness industry, and the YouTube fitness industry, and pretty much every outcropping of the fitness industry. I probably get more questions pertaining to nutrition than to exercise, even though I am not a nutritionist or a dietitian. And I'm finding that people are more confused about nutrition, about what they should eat, what superfoods are worth the money, what aren't, which online or which TV personality is serious or lying to them directly, like what will extend their life, what will shorten their life, what will clog their arteries, what will give them diabetes, what will give them gout, all this kind of thing. Part of the reason is that the nutrition industry, as it were, is based in fear and fear mongering. But that aside, it's another subject for another video. People, they want to feel that the nutrition that they have is in some way helping them reach their fitness goals. People see nutrition as the easier part of being healthy versus fitness, which is the harder part. Additionally, we see all the time that abs are grown in the kitchen and that fitness is 90% nutrition and these kind of things. And they want to be able to optimize their progress. At the same time, they expect fitness professionals, they expect anyone who claims to be or who is associated with fitness to also be a nutrition professional. When in fact, we know from various online critiques from various people that a lot of the people who make claims about nutrition don't know what they're talking about and they're just reiterating something they read somewhere or they saw somewhere. And a lot of what people see and read in various places is based on fear mongering, as I, as I mentioned earlier. It's based on appealing to people's insecurities. Avoid these five foods if you care about your testosterone levels. Or my children are eating toxic amounts of sugar. All these kind of ex explosive alarmist titles and these things intended to make people be scared that what they're eating is killing them or is limiting their health or their fitness goals. Now we know perfectly well that the American diet is crap and that people are killing themselves, right? So how are we dealing with that? We're telling people to stop eating cheeseburgers and to instead eat chia seeds. We're telling them to Stop eating pizza and instead eat spirulina or instead eat Garcinia Cambogia pills or drink coconut oil or apple cider vinegar. We're telling them to change from one extreme to another when a lot of us in the fitness industry have a thing called a cheat day or we have some kind of way of getting something that we enjoy into our diet that fulfills our appetites. That's the problem with these health products is that they don't satisfy any appetite. They're meant for an intellectual purpose, the intellectual understanding of nutrition that someone read somewhere or heard somewhere from some doctor that you should eat this or you should drink this or you should do this every day. And it's just leading people down a lot of really misguided, complicated, circuitous roads. The thing is, if you eat more calories in a day than you burn, you'll gain weight. And if you do the opposite, you'll lose weight. It's a very simple concept. Additionally, if you eat all the vitamins and minerals you need, you'll be healthy. Unless, you know, barring some kind of illness or genetic predisposition of some kind. For instance, no amount of vitamin K per day is going to cure my asthma for me. That's something I'm going to have to deal with my, the rest of my life. What gets my goat is that we are expected to know everything about nutrition. It has nothing to do with our scope of practice. Exercise, exercise programming, in some cases corrective exercise, various modalities of exercise. And obviously if you study exercise you pick up nutritional facts along the way. But that doesn't make you an expert in nutrition. And a lot of the time what people are saying, what fitness professionals are saying when it comes to nutrition, it has more to do with increasing their rapport with their client. It has more to do with increasing the client's dependence on them. For knowledge and understanding. It has more to do with getting them to follow the same or similar lifestyle that the personal trainer does, even if it has nothing to do with that person's lifestyle. Even if that lifestyle the trainer lives isn't based in any scientific evidence that it's the best way to live. 
Plenty of people who lift every day and lift heavy have messed up backs, shitty knees, fucked up elbows, fucked up shoulders. A lot of them have shitty high cholesterol and a lot of them are just not really that healthy and they're really not paragons of health. I'm not saying that having injuries makes you a bad person, but you should not be telling people who are in their 50s or, or 60s or 40s who may or may not have heart conditions or diabetes related conditions as a result of their age and lifestyle that eating a, a big ass steak for dinner is in some way helping them in, the, in terms of their health. You're basically telling them what they want to hear in terms of nutrition in order to make them more dependent on you as a trainer or as a fitness professional. And that's a problem I have with it. If I believe in a paleo diet or a vegan diet, as a vegan, I'll take it from a vegan standpoint. If I was pushing veganism on every client, I probably would get a lot of pushback. I'd probably get a lot of resistance because people perceive it as a restrictive diet where you have to limit what you eat, the things you enjoy. People get a lot of enjoyment from cheese and pizza. Whereas if it's a paleo diet and it's a high fat diet, I can say go eat a big ass steak and some broccoli with butter on it and you'll be fine. And I'll get more adherence. I'll get more obedience. I'll get more loyalty. I find a middle ground works best. If a person is sick, if they're overcome with illnesses, it's better to not complicate their lives by saying, all right, now you're, now you're gonna go on a vegan diet and totally change your life in every way. Sickness makes people stressful. Stress makes it harder for people to change their life. It makes it harder for them to take control of their life. You have to move in small steps with some people to get the progress that they desire and that you desire. It can't be about fulfilling my vegan ego by pushing veganism on them as the only option. So it's about saying to them, just eat healthy. Find healthy foods that are vitamin rich, nutrient dense. These are healthy foods. Foods that are nutritionally deficient are not healthy. How many vitamins are in pizza compared to sweet potatoes? There's some protein, there's some something else, there's some enriched flour vitamins that are added to the flour or the crust. Compare that to the content of a sweet potato. It's, in, it's incomparable. That means that the sweet potato is healthy and the pizza isn't. That means you have to limit the intake of pizza. <laughs> it's pretty simple, you know. There's no need to bog people's understandings down in jargon and products. Various millions and millions of expensive designer products. Now, I eat chia seeds, I eat flax seeds, I eat some of that hippie bullshit. I do it because it's, some of it is healthy, some of it helps me out with various things. Those things are nutritionally dense. I'm not saying they're not nutritionally dense. I'm saying that telling people that one or another $12 a pound product is gonna be the silver bullet to their health and nothing else needs to change is false. If you, eat, if you eat half a pizza and then you eat like five tablespoons of chia, the outcome is gonna be negative. The net effect will be negative. So the main thing is fitness professionals back the fuck off with the nutrition talk, unless you have a nutrition certification, unless you have nutritional knowledge that is based in science. People, if you're prospective clients, if you're watching this, ask your trainer for their knowledge, for their scientific data that they're getting this stuff from, they're talking about. And if they point you towards some figure, some specific figurehead that they respect as their nutritional authority, go to that person and get their research. Because everyone is selling something, everyone has an agenda, everyone wants to appeal to your fear and your insecurity to get you to buy their product. And maybe I'm doing that right now, a fear and insecurity about trainers who foist their nutritional knowledge on you. Because some of it's not knowledge, some of it is belief. So I hope you liked this video, I hope you got something out of it. If you did, click like. Don't forget to comment and subscribe for more Resistance Quest. And remember, if you want to stand out, stand up.